Well, it's been more than six years since the release of the USA-made Gerber Strongarm Field Knife. And it will absolutely go down in history as one of the most bomb-proof, kind of do-everything fixed blades that has ever hit the market. Well, since all those years have passed, tons of new knives have hit the market, and this has almost gone up 50% in its price. So in today's video, I want to see if it still justifies an upcharge that it's now going for, and can it really stack up to the competition on what has been released in years since we first saw this hit the market. So first off, let's discuss what really made the Gerber Strongarm make so many waves in the industry when it dropped with its features and its design before we talk about is it still worth it in 2022. Uh, the first off is American made. I mean, awesome, not overseas produced. Um, you're, it's made right there in Portland, Oregon. Um, and it is designed as really the ultimate do everything kind of uh, jack of all trades knife. Um, and that's really what is the selling point is that you're getting a knife that's just under five inches. Uh, it's full tank construction. It is literally bomb proof guys. We put this through this knife through the ringer. It went through, I believe 10 different YouTubers who basically tried to break it. Everything from opening up a 55 gallon oil drum to literally destroying a, a door. And we could not break this knife. It came back to me dull as a butter knife because of all the abuse, but put a convex edge on it and it has kept on ticking ever since. It's really like a testament to its toughness. And over and over again, that's what was myself, um, the market has seen is that this thing is just so well built uh, and it's not this huge monster knife. So it's easy to carry. Uh, a lot of people, particularly if you're in law enforcement or the military, carrying a fixed blade, you know, this big giant, you know, seven inch uh, old school K bar, you know, it, is it really worth carrying such a large instrument? This is a much more compact size, but you can get, still get so much done. The handle is designed in such a way that it's really ergonomic for a lot of different grips. Uh, it's still giving you a guard for more of a field knife deployment, but not so obnoxious that you can't use it in the woods. So it's giving you kind of the best of both worlds. Lots of traction, so you're not gonna ride up and hurt yourself if you're stabbing and slashing, but it, you can still choke up and get good control over the tool if you're doing feather sticks and carving. So it gives you that blending as well, glass breaker on the back, but it's not this obnoxious big giant thing. So it gives you that feature, but it doesn't get in the way of the usability of the tool. Second is the steel. Uh, you know, you can sometimes have a blade shape that in the steel preference that yeah, it'll hold its edge, but it'll chip out or snap and break. The 420 HC that they made this with, with I believe it's like a 55 to 57 Rockwell, is it doesn't hold its edge forever. You know, it's not a super steel by any means, and you'll have to resharpen it pretty frequently if you use it a lot, but it's, it's bomb proof. I mean, we, we cannot seem to get this thing to break, and I have like four or five of these, uh, and it's just so tough. You can thrash on it, pound on it, uh, torque on it, lateral you know movement. The tip is thick enough to pierce, um, but or it's thin enough to pierce, but thick enough to hold up to that uh, lateral motion and you're not going to snap the tip with really, really hard abuse. And so that, that mixture of that 420 that they decided to go with holds a good enough edge that it's not like bad, but it's not, it's so tough that you can really just abuse the heck out of it. And if you do have to resharpen it, it's easy to put an edge back on it. Then finally, you know, it's the sheath. A lot of companies, they, they make an excellent blade, but then they kind of lackluster on the sheath. Case in point, I'm working with a Lion Steel M5 right now. The tool is is excellent. I mean, it's, you know, double the price of what the Gerber Strongarm is now. Um, and you can get it with a leather option in some versions or a nylon. And the one that I picked up was in nylon. I mean, it, it does, it gets the job done, but just barely. I mean, the, the Gerber Strongarm sheath is beyond awesome. Uh, they just did such a good job with it. It's ambidextrous, super fast to deploy, locks the blade into place, has tabs for every different direction you want on a PALS webbing as well as a belt attachment now on webbing. They have lashing points for paracord. I mean, if there's a particular way you like to lash and carry your knife, this has the capability to do it. All in a package that when it was released wouldn't break the bank. And that's where we come into now pricing and competitive options and what else has now hit the market and is this really making sense anymore. Um, because when this was released, it was $49.99. I picked up about three out of the five I own for that price point. And it was, it was mind boggling. 
And so for years, it was almost impossible to compete at that price with really almost anything on the market. And it was like a no brainer. Just go pick up a Gerber strong arm, throw it in a go bag, gift it to somebody who's, you know, maybe um, going out and going to be deployed, you know, in the military. I mean, name the thing and uh, it, th they're going to love it. It's going to be indestructible and they're going to have something that they're proud to have, you know, and use and it's gonna keep on ticking. And so uh, when that originally was launched, that's it was just the whole package. And it was really not a master of any one thing, but it was good at all things. Now, what has happened though over the years is that prices have started to creep up and not just because of 2021, 22 inflation. Um, the price was $75 as of like mid last year, long before we were starting to see the runaway inflation that we've recently seen. And so now at that price point, it's starting to compete with some really heavy hitters that maybe are slightly better at a specific task. Uh, and that's really where you need to start asking yourself, do I need a jack of all trades knife or is it better to go with a dedicated tool as an example? But before we go any further in the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is LA Police Gear. They have so much equipment over there and with our exclusive 10% off promo code, you're gonna get amazing deals on some of the best known brands in the industry from not only their own LA Police Gear equipment and uh, apparel, but also stuff like 511 and Vertex, uh, Solomon, Merrill and Danner, uh, footwear, you got all types of different um, flashlights from say Surefire and Streamlight, Leatherman tools, as well as even the Gerber strong arm, uh, as well as tons of other firearm accessories, say from like Magpul and Vortex, just to name a few. And so uh, we do have that exclusive promo code as well as a bunch of links for you guys below that you can check out. Not only um, gear that you may be looking at, but possibly if at the end of this video, the Gerber strong arm makes sense for you, you might be able to pick it up and snag it for some of the cheapest prices around because of that exclusive code. And so with that, let's go ahead and continue along. The Mora Garberg was released since that strong arm came out. And this has um, Sandvik 14C 28 and steel, a better steel, it's gonna hold its edge longer than the 420 high carbon. Uh, still a full tank construction all the way through, polymer handle, uh, molly compatible or leather options for their sheathing, uh, fully ambidextrous there, 90 degree spine like on the uh, strong arm, Scandi grind, but it's got such kind of a thicker edge on it or uh, spine on it, I believe at 0.13. Um, so that it's really, really tough. And it usually goes between like 65 and $85, depending on the version stainless, or they do have also a high carbon version uh, and the sheath options and just kind of where you pick it up. And at that price for 99% of the activities you would ever use uh, in the woods, this is a better tool. It's gonna have longer edge retention, has a thinner stock with a better Scandi grind. So it's just gonna be a better woodworker uh, and it's made in Sweden, you know, for about that same price point. So if you need a woods knife for the same price, go with a more Garberg. What about strictly tactical? You want something that's more lethal, more piercing, uh, and gonna come with a better steel uh, than for the 420 the Becker BK-18. Usually floats right around like $80 for, you know, not much more investment, five, let's say 10 to 15 bucks. American made, made out of 1095 Crow Van, huge belly, high saber grind, huge harpoon piercing. Um, the handle feels really comfortable and good in the hand. You can upgrade them to Micarta for about $30 more and does come with a polymer ambidextra sheath that you can do a lot of lashing options. Not quite as many as the Gerber strong arm, but very close and it's a nice solid lock up there uh, for not much more money, five to 10 bucks, 10 to 15, let's say. Um, we can pick this up and it is a much more lethal tool uh, in many respects than say the strong arm uh, and also can perform excellent in the outdoors because of the very large belly. Again, gonna hold its edge a little longer and the higher grind, it's not, got, it's not as fat behind the edge. So that means that it's gonna be able to carve and whittle wood a little bit better than the strong arm. So should you still buy this knife and is it worth keeping the rotation? Well, if you already own one, and you, particularly if you picked it up back when they were a lot cheaper, kudos to you. You probably invested in one of the best tools for the price you can buy. I mean, it is just such an excellent, tough tool that will get so many tasks done and just keep on trucking and just gives you so much capability. Now, if you don't own one and you're looking at it and you're like, you know, 70 to 75 bucks, this is what I would ask you is, 
do you need a jack of all trades knife? I think this is an excellent gift still to give to someone who is going out for deployment for military, um, those type of activities. I think it would be phenomenal for that and so trustworthy and reliable. And I would say the most bomb proof of any of the ones that I've shown you today, of any of the models that I've shown you today, um, or for like go bags, you know, you're building out um, a get home bag, something like that. Uh, and you just need something that is so trustworthy, so reliable, you know it's gonna just keep on trucking and you want lots of options and it's variations of capabilities and you know basically being able to do just about everything, then yeah, I mean, it's still worth $75. If you need more and you're looking for more of a, a dedicated role at that $75 price point, $70 price point, um, there may be a lot of options out there, not just the ones I shared with you today, that's just better to look at or for not much more, five, $10 more, you can get a much better steel and you can get a very dedicated woods knife, camp knife, or you can get a very good dedicated, I'm thinking of like the K-Bar fighting knife. You know, maybe that is what you need. You know, that's gonna be a thinner, slashier, longer reach blade, um, made in America, better steel, you know? So, um, you know, those are like 80 bucks, I think. So that, that's where I think, um, where it was a no brainer in years past because it's like for 50 bucks, you can't go wrong. And now it's 75 for Jack of all trades. Totally. If you need a dedicated tool, there are for the same price or even cheaper, better options available that will get that specific type of task done. So I hope that this video has been fun and entertaining, um, giving you guys information, data for some of you just taking down memory lane, you're holding your Gerber strong arm right now, playing with it. And you're like, I need to get out there and beat on this thing again. I love this tool. And I know many of you, it has an iconic following at this point. Uh, and I look forward to hearing the comments. Uh, I appreciate your guys' comments and questions. It always helps the algorithm as well. Uh, and smash that like button. That helps as well. Uh, and check out the other video popping up. And I invite you guys to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. I'll see you out there.